Hello and welcome to the SPEAR education course on access preparation and emergency treatment. I'm Ali Nisei. And I'm Dennis Brave. And we're from Reworld Endo. And uh, Dennis, access preparation, as I mentioned in the diagnosis course, uh, that diagnosis and access are the most difficult part of endodontic therapy. And I can tell you that I see a lot of the students um, at school, as well as many of the recent graduates, uh, struggling the most with the access preparation and the challenges that it involves. Yeah, it's true, Ali. Um, uh, when you, you think of access, uh, if you take the endodontic access, what specifically are you inferring by talking about access? Mm -hmm. Are you talking about accessing the pulp? Or are you talking about accessing the root canal system in its entirety? You know, you hear about straight line access, you hear about all these things. What, right. what are we talking about? So what is endodontic access, right? Yeah. Endodontic access is the means by which we implement the endodontic triad. And the endodontic triad is the endodontic, you know, instrumentation, obturation, and the disinfection, which is, you know, cleaning. So clean, shape, and obturate, uh, the basic 101 endo triad, needs to be implemented. And in order to do that, you need to get inside the pulp space. Uh, so endodontic access is the means by which we create an opening into that space in order to uh, implement the endodontic triad. Well, how, how has that changed over time? I mean, th you know, going yeah. back 50 years ago, we were presented yeah. with goals. What's changed? Yeah, well, endodontic, uh, historically, the access has changed from the idea of just getting into the pulp space, which was just making a little opening on top of the tooth, and uh, finding the pulp to understanding that we need to remove the uh, the entire roof of the pulp chamber in order to clean any of the debris that would be stuck underneath the pulp uh, chamber roof, then moving to understanding that because some of the pulp uh, spaces kind of are hourglass shaped, then we need to kind of remove that bulge in the middle of the pulp chamber as well okay. in order to find the orifice. So then the, the, the goal became finding the, the root canal orifice. What comes to my mind uh, immediately is the access that was acceptable for hand instrumentation has changed mm -hmm. so dramatically with rotary instrumentation. Yeah. Nickel titanium being the issue versus stainless steel for mm -hmm. our hand instruments. And the fact that we could free curve our hand instruments pretty much any way we wanted to yeah. and get around things that were obstacles before that we can't do that. Absolutely. I think over the years, because of a, the use of uh, uh, the surgical operating microscope and better visualization, as well as the uh, understanding, better understanding through uh, multiple newer studies on the histology of teeth, we now understand that uh, the, the, the configuration of roots, the number of canals that are present in different teeth, much better. And that has really resulted into a, an evolution of the outline form of the endodontic axis that facilitates uh, discovery, exploration, finding all these canals and allowing us to have straight line access in order to instrument them most effectively. So, yeah. so are there particular principles uh, today that we need to uh, impart to our audience in terms of this process? Yes. So the basic principle is the concept of a straight line access from the occlusal plane to the, uh, the mid root to, you know, to the coronal one third or coronal one half of the root. So that is the key thing to understand. Plus the understanding that the, the outline form has to facilitate the flow of your instrument that you put on inside the tooth right from the tip of the, uh, the cusp as it flows directly into the uh, uh, orifice of the root canal. So that when I'm done with my access uh, preparation, I can put my microscope away, then look at the macroscopic picture of the tooth, having had already discovered all of the uh, orifices and prepared the access in such way that I can just put my file, whether the hand file or a rotary instrument, up on top, slide it on the wall of the preparation without it hitting a little bit of a ledge and it having flowed directly into so the feeds. access. It kind of feeds. It feeds it nicely. Right. This is the way you improve your access preparation, not only for reducing the torque on your files, but also improve your efficiency. Because if you don't have a nicely flowing access into the orifice, then you're going to spend a lot of time having to look inside the axis to make sure that your file is put directly inside the canal. And it, you know, the, my analogy for that is basically trying to uh, you know, thread, a, uh, thread a needle in a dark room. That's not a very no. uh, fun thing to do. No, not at all. Yeah. All right, so from the perspective of uh, advancing this uh, concept of access. Um, are we now th talking about uh, the 
entrance to the canal being part of access. In other words, not just the access to the pulp. Yes. But we're looking down in the canal now, and we're taking a certain part, maybe the top third of the canal, and starting to look at that as access. As a part of the access, absolutely. Yeah. Access is no, no longer just the above pulp. defrication. Yeah. It also includes this, the first one third of the root through okay. the use of RFS openers in a, prop, a proper way, or, uh, you know. That's a change. Uh, I mean, it, that's it a big change. Is. That's a big change from Absolutely. Me. Because the whole point of access is to improve your odds of instrumentation. Okay. And that has actually created a little bit of a dilemma, a little bit of a biomechanical dilemma. And that is, it's clear that you want to preserve as much of the tooth structure as possible in order to be minimally invasive so that you can preserve all, as much of the tooth structure as possible. Mm -hmm. But what we need to do is we need to understand that there is a balance between the, uh, the saving of the tooth structure as well as exposing ourselves to the increased risk of instrument separation, missing canals, and creating procedural right. errors throughout our instrumentation. So. Keeping that in mind, while there are some people that keep talking about minimally invasive, minimally invasive, and you know making the access preparation small enough, we believe that things should be minimally invasive. But there is an equilibrium that has to be reached between minimizing the risk of errors as well as maximizing uh, your visibility and visual, so it's visualization. A it's a balance. It's a it balancing sure act. A like bit. anything yeah. in life, right, yeah, Dennis? Yeah. <laughs> and there's also true that, you know, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few, le uh, few legs, a few <laughs> eggs. <laughs> right. But, uh, you know, given, given that, so you, we need to uh, make sure that we remove just enough tooth structure uh, right. and no more. Right. So having that, let's come back and talk about some of the armamentarium that okay. is needed to do the access preparation. Terrific.